A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord God said, I will cut a tender twig from the very top of a cedar tree and plant it on the peak of a tall mountain. I will plant it on the highest mountain in Israel. It will put out branches and grow into a beautiful and useful cedar tree. All kinds of birds will find shelter under it and shade in its branches. Every tree in the forest will then know that I, the Lord, bring down tall trees and make short trees grow tall. I dry up green trees and make dried up trees turn green again. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will keep my word. The word of the Lord. Our response is, Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. It is wonderful to be grateful and to sing your praises, Lord Most High. It is wonderful each morning to tell about your love and at night to announce how faithful you are. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. Good people will prosper like palm trees and they will grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon. They will take root in your house, Lord God, and they will do well. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, always be cheerful. As long as we are in these bodies, we are away from the Lord. But we live by faith, not by what we see. We should be cheerful because we would rather leave these bodies and be at home with the Lord. But whether we are at home with the Lord or away from him, we still try our best to please him. After all, Christ will judge each of us for the good or the bad that we do while living in these bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said, What is God's kingdom like? What story can I use to explain it? It is like what happens when a mustard seed is planted in the ground. It is the smallest seed in all the world. But once it is planted, it grows larger than any garden plant. It even puts out branches that are big enough for birds to rest in its shade. Jesus used many other stories when he spoke to the people, and he taught them as much as they could understand. He did not tell them anything without using stories. But when he was alone with his disciples, he explained everything to them. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear children, today we hear an interesting gospel story in which Jesus begins to tell stories. Now sometimes people have asked me, how come I almost always begin my homily with a joke? And the answer is simple. That's what Jesus did. It wasn't always a joke, 
but it was almost always a story. And some of them were very funny to those people back then, although we don't seem to grasp that. We don't seem to get the humor because our world is so different. What do I mean by that? But we just heard what the gospel said. He only taught the people by beginning with a story, whether it was a mustard seed or a man who had two sons or a farmer who goes out to sow seed and throws them all over, or uh, there were just so many stories that he used. He did that for a few reasons. One, it got their attention. Two, it, it got them to start thinking. And then three, it set the stage so that later on he could explain whatever the lesson was that day, which is for the most part exactly what I do when I begin with a story or a joke. I help people to better understand the message of the gospel. At least, I hope I do. So what was the message of today? Well, some people, when they hear this, like scientists will say, the mustard seed is not the smallest seed. There are smaller seeds in the world. And Jesus didn't mean the story to be taken literally. He wasn't giving us a science lesson. He was just making a point. And the point is, from the smallest of things, if it is planted, it will grow sometimes into the biggest thing. And people would find that hilarious. You mean from this tiny little thing, something big is going to happen? Absolutely. And that's where you come in. You who are little in height, sometimes people don't even see you when you're in church because you're so small. Because of you, there are many bigger people who come back to church. I know some of you only celebrated your first communion. Your grandparents, your aunts and uncles, others came just to see it. And perhaps it was one of the few times Jesus got to speak to them in church. And so you made as little as you are, you made big things happen. Maybe when you share with your friends and your cousins what we do here at St. Elizabeth Ann Seaton Church with children's liturgy, maybe that will sow a little seed. And you'll begin to wonder, maybe going to church is a good thing. Maybe the going to church will be a fun thing. And maybe they'll get to enjoy all the things that you get to enjoy when you come to church, when you come to children's liturgy. That's the message of this story. To never underestimate what we can do, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant we think we are, because God can use every one of us to spread the good news. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things remain. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who, with the Father and the Son, is adorned and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resur resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that God will hear our prayers, let us pray in confidence for all that we need. When I say, we pray, you say, Lord, hear our prayer. May the day quickly come when all believers are united in praise of the one true God. May everyone seek to understand those who are different from themselves, we pray. May every person be treated with respect and dignity 
as a beloved child of God. May all in the military and the missions and their loved ones be safe and secure. We pray. May the faith and joy of believers attract unbelievers into God's loving arms and into his church. May our parish be blessed with an increase in priests, deacons, brothers, and sisters, we pray. May those on the verge of giving up find strength, and those filled with doubt be filled with faith, we pray. If you have people you'd like to pray for, please do that now. For these intentions and those listed in our parish prayer book, we pray. Loving God, we know you hear and answer us whenever we call upon you. With the help of the Holy Spirit, may we hear and answer you too whenever you call upon us. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Amen.